My name is Mike van der Dobbelsteen, I'm Dutch, but I've lived here for nearly three years in this village of saint clair sur elle on the edge of the River L and the Pont de la Pierre. My wife and I have been doing a lot of research on the story of the 115th Infantry Regiment on the 12th of June 1944, the battles that took place here during the drive on the way to saint Lô. This is a typical example of a river in Normandy in the summertime. Although the areas around dozens of rivers between Omaha Beach and here, every single step of the way you had to capture a bridge. You need to secure a road leading to that particular bridge too. You need those roads, you need those bridges because as you can see, although infantry could quite easily get across here, look, I'm standing on the river bed. But then on the far side, you have these embankments. You see how steep they are. The vegetation will not allow vehicles to pass through here at all. You need a bridge. As insignificant as the Le Pont de la Pierre may look, it is a vital objective, and that's what the Germans were aware of too. The same for Pont Jourdan. Just two little bridges across what could be described as a creek, the River L. This is Le Pont de la Pierre, the stone bridge across the River L. The objective for the 1st Battalion of the 115th Infantry Regiment on the 12th of June 1944. I live just about 100 yards away from this bridge at a house that has the same name and since moving here I've learned a great deal about the history of this bridge, the casualties, the men that were involved, the tactics. The Battle of the River L was more than just a bridge. The 29th Infantry Division was um, made up of troops of the states of Maryland and Virginia originally, but by the time they were in the UK, after spending near a year and a half training for their mission to be the spearhead in Operation Overlord, a lot of troops came in from different parts of the United States. A lot of troops from Pennsylvania, the state of New York, New Jersey, Delaware. That was the composition of the 29th Division, but still none of them had combat experience. They landed at Omaha Beach on D-Day, the 115th Infantry Regiment, which is Maryland National Guard landed later in the morning on June 6, right in front of the exit leading into saint laurent sur mer They were open exposed beach terrain. They had to reach the shingle that ended the beach area, get across the road, the seaside promenade. Then they were up against the bluffs, the Germans on top of the high ground, overseeing the entire area. They had the high ground, they controlled the beach. For many hours, there was no movement possible. Once eventually the breakthroughs did start to take place, the next stage for the 115th was to get through the flooded areas near Trevière. Flooded areas, the Germans operated locks in the area to, op to flood those fields manually. It's a military thing. It's not just a German invention. Even the Romans used inundations in their tactics. Those areas had to be crossed too. There were troops that had to wade through the marshy areas. But once they got through there, another type of terrain opened up. The hedgerows. Here you can see a typical example of the hedgerow countryside in Normandy sunken lanes, embankments with trees, lined with bushes and all kinds of shrubs, generally nasty, spiky, thorny type of bushes too. It is like a jungle warfare. For a lot of troops from the United States, this is a terrain unfamiliar to them. This was the toughest terrain yet, and they were going to have to fight their way through this area for the next several weeks. General Omar Bradley described this terrain as the damnedest country he'd ever seen. After the 29th Division was able to get out of the Omaha Beach area and had been able to secure Isigny sur Mer, it was now time to uh, move in the direction of Saint Lô. They were following the highway between Isigny and Saint Lô, and it was to the eastern side of that highway that the 116th and 115th Infantry Regiment were involved. The 175th, that was to follow them on and eventually continue following the western side of that particular highway. And it looks like that the advance was going well. But until the 9th of June, this is when the 2nd Battalion of the 115th Infantry Regiment was ambushed near Le Carrefour. Straight away, the 1st Battalion of the 115th Infantry Regiment was told to keep on going past that particular location. And after a very long haul, they were able to finally get some rest uh, just about a mile and a half north of saint marguerite del it was then decided to launch an attack in the early morning of the 12th of June. 
To get the troops ready, they were supposed to reach the line of departure just about uh, 200 yards north of the River L, and we're currently standing on the line of departure. This sunken lane, this was to be their jump off point. We're now standing in the field which overlooks the Pont de la Pierre, the farm you can see in the background here, that is right next to the River L. Looks great, it isn't. They have to go downhill across open exposed terrain. That means that the Germans on the far side, on the high ground, they can see any movement coming towards them. From here, from the German positions along the high ground, south bank of the River L, we're looking in northerly direction towards the open fields that the Americans were expected to attack. Along the high ground, the ridge that you see in front of you, the ridge, the hedgerow that runs west to east, with the house, the farm building you see there with the red tiles, that was the line of departure, and that's where the 1st Battalion of the 115th Infantry Regiment was to attack from. And as soon as they broke cover, they had to cross that open terrain and were therefore in full view of the Germans. The same view that we have here today, they had 75 years ago too. The Germans were given this respite on the 11th of June. Well, actually on the 10th of June already, they'd started to pull back across the River L because they wanted to set up defensive line all the way from Ceresi over to where they meet the River Vier. For that reason, elements of the 352nd Infantry Division, the Germans who had been defending Omaha Beach on D-Day, were setting up their defences, not just the Pont de la Pierre, but also Pont Jourdain, half a mile further east from here. They had troops being brought in from the 30th Schnelle Brigade, which is the German bicycle troops. Although bicycle troops sounds like infantry with bikes, but they did certainly also have self-propelled guns at their disposal. At least 10 of them have been noted near the chateau to the south side of saint clair sur lel at that particular time. Then there's also the troops of the 3rd Fallschirmjäger Division who came in and largely were deploying their defences along the south side of the River L, closer towards Serezy la Forêt. There's no clear proof of any Fallschirmjäger having been involved in the defences around the two bridges here, but that's probably for another documentary. Those bridges were to be attacked simultaneously. The planned attack was to take place at 5 a.m. on the 12th of June, 1944. First battalion was to attack the bridge here, the 3rd Battalion was to attack Le Pont de la Joudan over half a mile east from here. As the uh, 1st Battalion of the 115th Infantry Regiment was uh, preparing to attack here along the sunken lane behind you, the Germans had already prepared their defences along the south side of the River L. Now apparently the Germans were aware of this imminent attack. They weren't necessarily aware of the fact that the attack was going to take place that particular morning. But whilst the Americans were holding their lines and bringing reinforcements in, preparing for this attack, it also gave the Germans that opportunity to have reinforcements brought in and focus on the defense. But their defenses were scattered. They had fewer troops available to defend a larger area, but that was to their advantage. See, at the time that the attack finally did begin, it was after a massive artillery barrage by the US Army. Three artillery battalions were involved in this attack. It was the most intense artillery barrage since D-Day. But they had hardly any effect at all because the Germans were scattered over such a wide area, along the high ground, in the hedgerows, in the woods, slightly to the east of the bridge. The artillery had no effect whatsoever on the German troops. After much confusion, the attack finally did begin, but it was already daybreak, so there was a lot of delay. When the men of the 115th Infantry Regiment were lining up for the attack, there were only a few open gaps in these hedgerows that they could possibly use. Gaps that obviously also the Germans knew about. They had the machine gun set up in such a way they were covering those exits. These exits became killing grounds. As soon as American troops started to emerge from these hedgerows, the Germans defending the bridge, Le Pont de la Pierre, had their in their sights. It's no wonder there were so many casualties. But those elements of the 1st Battalion were coming down the road from Saint-Marguerite-Dell on the way in. 
they were caught out in the open. The Germans could see this bridge from various angles and it was covered in crossfire. And that is exactly why this became such a killing ground. You have a river, a stream, with high ground on both sides, a valley. So all you need is your positions to be on the high ground so you can overlook that whole area. And that's the situation that we find ourselves in. Those men didn't stand a chance. Although they tried several ways of getting down to the bridge from different angles across the field, down the road, the Germans could see them and every single one of these attempts failed. At the end of the day, 87 casualties, 16 of whom were killed. There was no way they could get anywhere near this particular bridge. And it was by 11.20 that particular morning that Major Morris of Company A, 115th Infantry Regiment, ordered his troops to dig in because there was absolutely no way they could get anywhere near this bridge whatsoever. We're standing on the road that uh, leads from saint marguerite here to the left of me, which is west, down towards pont Judan. pont Judan to the right of me, the Pont de la Pierre is to the left of me. From the high ground here, open and exposed, you can clearly see what a dominating terrain this really was for the Germans. They had the positions along the hedgerows, following the ridge of the high ground. Even Chateau Rochefort can be seen vaguely in the tree line over there. From those positions, the Germans had a clear view of this entire terrain. Any movements by the American forces in this area could be observed. The Germans knew an attack was going to be imminent and they could dominate the whole area. I'm now standing in one of the German foxholes that had been prepared for the defense of the bridge Pont Jourdain, which we have here in front of us. We're looking out onto the valley that the River L is crossing through. We have the Chateau de Rochefort to our left and the Pont Jourdain here to the right of us. This ditch is a natural drainage ditch. The Germans already had a fantastic line of defense here. You've got the earth embankment here, which provides protection, but more importantly, the foliage. That gives you air cover, it gives concealments too. And look at the view. They had a fantastic view of this entire valley, the River L. The main road that links saint marguerite del towards Cerisy. The road they could see from here, but more importantly, the Pont Jourdain, the bridge that was going to be attacked by the 29th Division. The first battalion of the 115th Infantry Regiment was to attack, secure and get across the Pont de la Pierre. And it was the 3rd battalion of the 115th that was to secure this bridge at the same time. The road in front of us is where the attack was to come from. 3rd battalion, 115th Infantry Regiment were to lead the way here. The Germans were on the high ground on the opposite side, south side of the river, along the hedgerow you see with the tall trees behind me. The first attack was successful. The 3rd Battalion was able to get around a mile and a half south from this point, but was then forced to retreat because they were the only ones to get across the bridge and were in fear of being completely surrounded by the counter-attacking German troops. They had to fight their way back at the price of a lot of men. We're standing in a position that was uh, captured in the drawing by Charles Murphy, 121st Engineer Battalion of the 29th Division. He made drawings and one of these drawings was here. The Germans had an SB gun hit right here with a clear view of the Pont Jourdain. At the moment of the second attack, tanks of the 747th Tank Battalion were appearing along the road, were about to cross the bridge when they were knocked out by this SB gun, although allegedly one of them was knocked out by a landmine. Here we're standing right next to the River L with the Pont Jourdain. To the left of the shady area, the hedgerow with the trenches that were used by the infantry. A little bit further up in the far end corner of the field, that's slightly lit and as well where you have the tree with the mistletoe in the top. That break, that opening in the hedgerow there, that is where the German SP was located with a clear shot on this bridge from there. Very obvious here is that they had the clear view, clear sight and coverage too. All that information about this 
we've discovered through local research, my wife Deborah and I, we've been looking so much into the history of the battle for the River L, the attack on both bridges, Le Pont Judas as well as the Pont de la Pierre. And after talking with locals, some were kids at the time of the battles. Um, people who lived in the house that we now live in at the Pont de la Pierre, describing how the Germans had blown up trees so they would fall across roads to block these roads in front of our house. How here the tanks tried to get across the bridge didn't work simply because the Germans, even though we're talking about bicycle troops, they still had SP guns to add to the firepower here. So the second attack failed. General Gerhard, Uncle Charlie, the commanding officer of the 29th Infantry Division, he was so mad. He ordered Colonel Cannon to get one of his battalions ready to then renew the attack that same evening. And that's what they did. The 2nd Battalion of the 116th Infantry Regiment was to attack again, the third attack at Pont Jourdain on that same day. Now this caught out the Germans completely by surprise. They were not aware that the Americans were to attempt the third time on that same day. And the 116th Infantry Regiment had had some time to rest, recuperate, and had some decent sleep. So they could new, renew that particular attack and were successful too. They captured Pont Jourdain, they were able to get across and move their way into saint clair sur lel But also, more importantly, the road leading towards Couvain was now open. That means the road towards saint lô that day alone, at both bridges, Le Pont de la Pierre as well as Pont Judan, 115th Infantry Regiment, 1st and 3rd Battalion suffered tremendous casualties, but also elements of the 116th were suffering quite a few casualties in the process. Total number, just over 540 casualties, just on the one single day, for two bridges across a stream that you can just walk across. This monument my wife Deborah and I have uh, created. It's to honor and remember the men of the 1st Battalion, 115th Infantry Regiment, who lost their lives during the battle here for the bridge, Le Pont de la Pierre, 12th of June 1944. 16 men were killed here, a total of 87 casualties amongst the troops of the 1st Battalion. 3rd Battalion, 115th Regiment, 2nd uh, Battalion, 116th, those men of the 747th Tank Battalion too, who became casualties on that one single day but about half a mile further away from here, further east. It is a large number of casualties, but it was another stage leading towards the capture of the most important objective of all, the crossroad town of St. Lo. This attack here, that particular experience, it helped improve the tactics. It helped improve dealing with hedgerow countryside fighting, something only learned in the process. It was a tough lesson, but it was a lesson learned nonetheless. One of the many lessons learned here during these battles is that although you have an existing stone bridge, you don't necessarily want to focus on such a bridge because at the same time, it is an objective that is being monitored, is being observed by the Germans from well-concealed, well-prepared defenses. What you need is to get across the same obstacle, a river in this case, from a different location where the Germans are not expecting such a thing. Combat engineers therefore played a crucial role in bringing forward elements of the British designed Bailey Bridge. Simpler footbridges were also constructed, sometimes just even used the doors of destroyed farms to get across creeks and that proved to be one of those major lessons learned. Don't go for the obvious because that's what the Germans expect too. It helped eventually with the securing of the cross to town of St. Lo on the 18th of July 1944 and then within a week Operation Cobra was launched and the American forces were finally able to break through the German lines and the back of the German defences were literally broken streaming into B Brittany. It was battles like these that helped with the success later on.